Okie doke. Yep. So, uh, Rob did pop over yesterday, and uh, as you can see, well, some people will know right off the bat, others maybe not. Um, uh, is, uh, yeah, we've set up the, hold on, 1861 scenario for um, the U.S. Civil War. Um, so, when he, yeah, we haven't played or, or uh, did anything. It was a toss up between that and the uh, Clash of Giants um, game. And so we watched watched some YouTube videos. I think we watched, uh, yeah, we watched um, some of Cataclysm Now doing Clash of Giants. Uh, we watched Gilbert Collins talk about the U.S. Civil War. Um, we watched, oh darn it, someone else I can't remember. Um, but I'll I'll be honest with you, I could tell based on the way Rob was talking, his heart was on this game. Uh, um. I even told him, I even told him, yeah, I did. I even told him, I said, look, um, from what I gather, I think the Clash of Giants game is probably perhaps an easier game to get, uh, to play. Uh, you know, it's like a, you know, specific battles and so on and so forth. Um, uh, but I said, perhaps from what I've, uh, been told, uh, the rules for this game, um, are really well written. So maybe... The other game is easier mechanically or whatever, or less whatever's, but maybe it's not as well written. I don't know. I really don't. But like I said, even there was at one point, I um, can't remember what the game was, and uh, uh, one of the YouTube people uh, commented on something, and um, Rob said, well, I guarantee if he tried to play Clash of Giants, he'd find that really complicated. And I was like, I could just see in the back of my mind, I was like, well, what's the point, man? Like, or... I gotta say that to him, but I was like, look, Rob, if you want to play U.S. Civil War, man, go for it. I mean, that's why I purchased it, for crying out loud. I wanted to play it. Um, I always assumed it was going to be a solo game, and I told him I wanted to have a Civil War game where it, um, <clears throat> excuse me, gave me like a strategic whatever, and I've never heard a bad word about it. So there we go, and from what I've been told... Uh, just start with the basic game and don't even look at the advanced stuff. Don't even bother. Uh, he wanted to put plexiglass on it or whatever, but I was like, no, man. You could see this beautiful texture. We'll just screw with it. But I'm like, no, I want to I want to touch this. Uh, it That texture is just blowing my mind. Um, I'll tell you one thing I love is the counters are almost as thick as the Blue Panther type stuff or the stuff I get from uh, which I find a superior pro product, sorry, tough, um, is um, from Custom Game Bits. <clears throat> Excuse me. But it's amazing that this is good thickness and it's cardboard. Um, yeah, so I'm going to be the Union. He's the um, Confederates. I don't have a flipping clue what is going on. Um, I love this mountain range. It looks totally neat. Um, and we were yapping about like, is this part of the Appalachians? I don't like, we just, both of us have no, so little American geography. It's awesome. You know what? It is awesome because it's almost like the flip when we talk to Americans sometimes and, um, you know, they have no flipping clue about Canadian geography. So it's like, okay, there we go. Like, yeah. Cause I'm like, whoa, I didn't know Ohio was there and whatever. Yeah. I have no flipping clue. Um, I will admit, uh, say one thing. I love the term Trans Mississippi. That just sounds so cool. So I hope there's a lot of stuff going to happen there, um, or potentially could happen. Um, and Rob doesn't know it yet, but I'm going to tell him because uh, he's like, "Oh, do you want to like uh, play again during the week?" And I'm like, uh, "I don't have that type of, you know, I've got limited time for my whatevers." Actually, you know what? We're going to go my way because. I don't want to look at the Confederates. Um, yeah, I don't know what's going on. Uh, it's awesome looking. I can say that, though. Um, and I love this freaking setup stuff, man. This was really nice. Like, well done. And I love the trench things. Yeah, we got to talk about trench works. And Rob is talking about sappers. And uh, there was also some battle where, I guess, um, uh, the explosion was so bad that... Uh, when they sent in, I don't know if it was the Union or whatnot, but uh, the crater was so steep that they were just getting mowed down trying to climb up the crater. I was like, holy... Um, imagine, oh, I don't want to talk about it, man. Um, 
Anyways, yeah, it's a beautiful game, uh, but here's the kicker. I'm going to tell Rob that, um, sorry, dude, but uh, you're going to have to teach me the rules. I'll, like, I'll go over them, whatever, but he's going to be the person that has to tell me what in the world is going on. That's just, that's just the way it is, because uh, I've got other things to do. So let's go to the other room, and I'll show you what I was going to start doing today, but I'm running out of time. But I'll talk about the other stuff. Hold on, I'm just going to turn off some stuff so I don't whatever's excuse me yeah we'll look at the um thing uh, here i'll turn on a light maybe that'll help or the there we go so this is the uh lego ish stuff that rob got me i just put on what uh, i just do the did the french dude but um i don't know it looks pretty darn good to me man uh and there is a great war special if you go to their youtube thing and they uh, have linked to some guy in the States who knows so much about weapons, it's not funny. And uh, himself and uh, colleagues go out and shoot the actual guns. It's like, holy moly. But I think that's a Mauser. I was like, wow, I'm starting to clue into this weirdness. Um, so the German helmet doesn't come with uh, the spikes there. <coughs> Excuse me. But... I was thinking, hmm, I know it's not the same because I think the Italians uh, use the French helmets a uh, year after they clued in that, um, yeah, limestone on the head and uh, other things, you know, not good. Um, I was thinking, don't put the spike on and I could almost use that as a Italianish helmet, maybe, I don't know. Uh, not bad. Yeah, you know, here's that barbed wire thing, but... I'm impressed. Look at this little camo thingamajig or whatever the hell. Nice. Uh, the multi-pocket things. Um, see, I did did some notes. Oh, yeah, that's about uh, potential that we may have another gaming uh, buddy or whatever you want to call it. <clears throat> Excuse me. Um, so my, uh, so Zoe uh, mentioned that um, Stefan, her husband, my son-in-law, um, there's a guy at his work that is, has been asking, oh, would, uh, your dad be interested in playing Axes and Allies? Cause, uh, I guess they mentioned that I'm into gaming. So, um, I said, yeah, but, um, you know, it, it's kind of like dating for me. Um, you just don't, I'm, I'm not, I'm not a game whore or whatever you want to call it. I mean, some people are and they can get into that. I'm just not personality wise. I can't deal with that. Like what the hell? I have to, you know, like, no, not going to happen. Um, like, I need to, you know, like, <laughs> the hell. Um, but I love the gesture, and I love that is what I'm saying. Um, and I would love to reach out and, and, you know, it's you get the idea. But, you know, there's boundaries. Um, and here's the other boundary thing, or trying to think about other people. I said, yeah, we're into it. So I asked... Um, rob about it yesterday and uh he was like oh yeah i'd be up for that and afterwards i said i am too however there's no effing way i'm doing three player uh game with one of the three being a new person i don't think that's good for the dynamic <clears throat> um like rob and i know each other for years that's not fair and this guy just shows up out of nowhere nah not not into it so what I'm going to do, sorry, I don't know why it keeps doing that funky thing with the shadow. Um, so what I'm going to do is um, ask Stefan, <clears throat> excuse me, like I want somebody that he knows and kind of like I know as well. Um, let's do a four player Axis and Allies game or something. Um, so that way the power dynamic is not so one way. I just, you know, I'm not into that. Um, so also I was going to do it today, but I got tired. Uh, or I am getting tired or whatever, but I, I am going to do some of this. It's a, well, I'll tell you what I'm going to end up doing. Hold on. Um, I'm going to put this a bit down here. Uh, do I need to? No, that's about it, I think. So, yeah, I'm, I'm going to start playing the Tannenberg game. Uh, one of the reasons is, obviously, uh, Rob and I are not going to be playing um, The World Undone for a while because we're going to be focused on the U.S. Civil War. And this level of, I guess we'll be also doing it with Axis and Allies, and so maybe I'll get my fill that way. But 
Um, right now, I also need this. I can remember once I was watching one of the videos. I can't remember what it was. I think it was for Leningrad. If I do believe. Yes, it was. Uh, Callendale was doing a playthrough for Leningrad. And he was mentioning why he was playing this type of complexity or rule system or whatever. And I think he called it something like uh, comfort food. Just, you know, for his mind or whatever. It's like, you know, you, you still get the gaming fix. Uh, you know what I mean? And um, this is that, that this type of thing for me. I need this right now as, uh, and I, you know, I thought I was going to get it with Raw, because, but it's not going to happen with the U.S. Civil War thing. That's for bloody sure. Um, and I've, you know, like I said, I've been toying, um, well, I've been playing, try, okay, this game, as far as I'm concerned, is just begging, and I think I've mentioned this before, and I've been working on it for quite a while now, um, off and on, is it needs a, de a, de a deluxe version, simple as that, and uh, that's what I'm going to do, you know, uh, have been working on, I'll talk a bit about it later, and, um, yeah, I'm going to do some playthrough, but it's not going to be like super whatever, but I'm, you know, I, I want to give it proper, um, you know, a proper respect. I'm not just going to, you know, just be ridiculous about it. So yeah. And we'll talk about, uh, you know, I'll show my counters and the comparison of, um, the original counters, the Spence and Gable, uh, Gable counters and the discrepancies that I uh, noticed between the Spence and Gable and Excalibur. And also, uh, you know, we'll talk about the, uh, I'll just do everything. It's so simple. I was like, well, initially what happened was I was like, wait a minute. There's only three, pa you know, look how quick the rules are. Like, I'll just read the rules out. It, it's so, I mean, I'm going to read them anyway. So why not? Um, yeah. So maybe I'll just end uh, this part. No, we won't. Should I? Is there anything else to do? Yeah, I just want to get the living room arranged uh, downstairs so I can get all the maps um, ready um, for Develt Krieg for the Saturday uh, live streams. Um, yeah, my pretend film is actually going well, so I'm really happy about that. Um, yeah, let's do the design notes, which I think are really nice um, because it got me, you know, I was I would love, and I've tried, um, I shouldn't say tried hard, but I did uh, try to contact Richard Spence and he passed away uh, something like three weeks or something after I uh, tried to contact the person. I was like, oh gosh, that felt weird. But uh, there we go. The design notes are just super nice. Um, you know, um, there we go. Here, I'm going to read it and you can see it at the same time. So Tannenberg is the first of a planned series of games on campaigns and battles of the First World War. These games will use a similar game system, although individual adjustments will be made to reflect the uniqueness of the situation and the changing nature of the war. Members of the series now underway are Sarajevo, Austro-Serbian campaign of 1914, Ooh. and Kaiserschlacht, uh, I probably didn't say that right, Battle for France in 1918. And as far as I know, Excalibur has done a really nice version of it, I guess. I don't have it, but um, um, like they have a proper boxed version or something. Uh, a great deal of research went into this game, I agree, uh, including several German and Russian sources. Every effort has been made to make the game both historically accurate and playable. Because historicity has not been sacrificed, it will be admittedly uh, very difficult for the Russians to achieve a major victory. At the same time, however, the Germans won't find it easy to recreate Hindenburg's victory either. Game design, Richard Spence. Game development, James Gable. Um, yeah, just a wonderful little... Uh, and look at this. Even has like the uh, addenda in it. And, um, and I think I've mentioned it has some beautiful little... Um, uh, interesting things it does with uh, cavalry, and I like the way that it also has, uh, well, we'll talk about it later, the inverted units, and the way uh, he um, uh, they've incorporated, um, <clears throat> excuse me, uh, the way that the Russians, see, I mean, the Germans seem to know, know what the Russians were up to. So, you know, the Russians behave similarly uh, in 
covertness, let's say, in their own territory, but the gig is up as soon as they get into German territory. Like they can't invert the same, like they're not, yeah, it's, it's just really nice. Um, yeah, it's just a wonderful little game. And so uh, next Sunday, maybe I'll start that up. Um, but right now, like I said, I'll just, uh, I'll just end it now. Okay, hope you're having a great Sunday.